Okay, it's 7 o'clock. It's uh, time to call to order the regular meeting of the Common Council of the City of Hudson. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Council President McCormick? Here. District 1 Morset? Here. District 2 Alms? Here. District 4 Weber? Here. District 5 Hoggett? Here. District 6 Hall? Here. Before we get started, I'm reserving my right to vote as the uh, District 3 representative. And the first item is a swearing in of a police lieutenant. Marty? Sir. Thank you. Would uh, you have all the police on board? Okay. Hi. Hi. We don't ramble behind you. You don't look any better in the way. <laughs> All the way over by Tom. We're going to do it between the flags, Tom. Yep. Judge Garrity, I'm sorry. Are you going to make any sure announcement or something? <laughs> no, I just room. thought you'd. <laughs> <laughs> you going to tell what he's here? Oh, I will in a minute. Yes, first. Let's do it. Let's get sworn in. Raise your hand. Good afternoon. I, Jeff Willems. I, Jeff Willems. Having been appointed as Lieutenant for the City of Hudson Police Department. Having been appointed as Lieutenant for the City of Hudson Police Department. Swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. I swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of Wisconsin. And the Constitution of the State of Wisconsin. And will faithfully and impartially discharge and will faithfully and impartially discharge the duties of said office the duties of said office to the best of my ability to the best of my ability so help me God so help me God his wife is going to pin on his uh, his lieutenant badges uh, <coughs> Jeff comes from us from North Hudson originally uh, he had, was five years there before he came to us in 2007 uh, most recently, he was our detective sergeant, worked in our detective division. Um, he has started his lieutenant duties, obviously, the first part of the year. Uh, he's doing a great job. Uh, the guys really like him. Uh, hopefully, this will last a long time. He won't be leaving someplace else. <laughs> last lieutenant I promoted lasted six months. So, <laughs> but uh, we're really looking forward to having him on the department and working hard for us. So. Don't make her laugh. She's got a hard enough time getting <laughs> Yeah, stick here. One more speech. Yes. <laughs> That's all you have to say about it? <laughs> That's it. Congratulations. Yeah, yeah, thank congratulations. you. Thanks. Congratulations. It's now the time for uh, comments and suggestions from any citizens present about any item that is not on the agenda. Good evening. How are you tonight? I'm Ruth Peterson, 735 11th Street South in Hudson. I'm here to re represent the Hudson Hot Air Fair. I would like to invite you, the people of Hudson, to attend the 27th annual Hudson Hot Air Fair. February 5th, 6th, and 7th. We have a number of pre-events. Pre On Saturday the 30th at County Market, there will be a balloon baskets and some hand-painted art of balloons from Charlie Market. And some of Charlie's balloons will be inflated at Saturday at EP Rock School during the hot air fair. Captain Boo and the carousel and a couple of the other hand-painted balloons will be there. Sunday on the 31st is Family Day activities at the Phipps Center for the Arts from 1 to 3. For for um, kids to make things for the parade, and they can march it on the parade. And that brings me to Friday night and our parade. It's a two-block parade running down 2nd Street, starting at 7 o'clock with at least 20 or more balloons lighting up the streets with their burners with fireworks after the, after the parade at Lakefront Park if we don't burn the streets up first. <laughs> Saturday at six, on the 6th at 7.30 a.m. and again at 3 o'clock p.m., a balloon launch at E.P. Rock School. 
This year, we have a couple of cause balloon rides in conjunction with the American Cancer Society, St. Croix Department of Aging. These rides are for people who are dealing with or have cancer or care, who are dealing with or have cancer or caretakers and people that are dealing with life tragedies and also dementia, dementia people. Again on Sunday at 7.30 a.m., there is another balloon launch, weather permitting. All flights are weather per, wind and weather permitting. Along with the balloons, there is a marketplace craft fair and hot air fair souvenirs to purchase from eight to eight. And other miscellaneous activities going on at the launch field also that day. We also have a 5K run that starts at 10 o'clock, the regis registration at nine at Mount Zion Lutheran Church. If anyone is still interested, there is plenty of room for more runners that you could either run or walk. <laughs> and Saturday night, we have the moon glow or the field of fire. That all depends on the weather and the wind. Many things that are, there are also some, a number of other things going on with the local businesses all weekend. We have the retail promotion button, retail button promotion, a pet costume contest at Angels, and kids fishing derby. You can also check the website and follow us on Facebook for a schedule of, of updated events. We, the Hot Air Affair, would like to thank the City of Hudson, their staff, the sponsors, partners that help us make this a wonderful event. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else that would like to uh, address the council on any item that's not on the agenda? Okay, discussion of possible action and consent agenda items. To approve the regular session meeting minutes of January 11th, 2016. To approve claims for payment in the amount of $683,914.73. A detailed description is available in the clerk's office on request and is posted on the city's website. To approve a contingent on payment of any outstanding debt owed to the city and successful completion of the background check. Approve the issuance of four regular operator's license for the period of January 26, 2016 to June 30, 2017 to Shelton Davis, Martin Hofstein, Peyton Butchard, and Nicholas Pol Polarski. To approve the 2016 boat mooring fee of 560 per annual fee and no changes to the policy. To approve the 2016 park user fees, to approve the 2016 Grandview Park Concession Agreement with the Hudson Softball Association. To approve to increase the 2016 boat launch fees for city residents and non-city residents. To approve the Les Berg Memorial 5K Run Walk event. To consider the transfer or sale of park property on Cooley Road as requested by Gaffers. The board recommended all legal costs, survey costs, etc be the responsibility of the gaffers. I think actually that's, that's on finance committee. Yeah. That was not on consent. No? Okay. To approve Colleen Peterson and Julie Call as election inspectors as they have expressed interest in being appointed as an election inspector. If approved by council, their term would be effective from January 12, 2016 through December 31st, 2017, with the additional consideration that they may also serve as special registration deputies or special voting deputies as needed for election related duties at the qualifying community based residential facilities after training has been successfully completed. To approve the request for an agent change to John Cromer at Spirit Seller LTD doing business as spirit sellers for the license year ending June 30th, 2016, contingent on pay payment of any outstanding debt owed to the city and surrender of the current liquor license. To approve the application for a secondhand jewelry dealer license for David Inlow, Richard Jewelers Incorporated, doing business as Inlow Design Jewelers located at 523 Second Street for the period of January 26, 2016 through December 31st, 2000. 16 contingent on payment of any outstanding debt owed to the city. And then conditional use permit. You missed that one at the top of the page. That, that's where it's the wrong explanation. For the Would condition you? use permit for the outside sale. For the, let me look here. It's on the sheet here, Leanne. It's at the top of the sheet there. Miss that one? Yeah. I didn't miss that one. I got the wrong explanation. And to approve. 
The transfer or sale of park property on Cooley? No, no, oh. no. Conditional, conditional use. use. First one. But it's the wrong description oh, it's under the wrong description. that. Yeah. Just read the title. Okay. It says to approve a conditional use permit for outdoor sales area for the 1301 Gateway Circle Offerman Enterprises, Larry Offerman. It's in the. It's in your packet, I believe. Or is it not in the packet? No, it's in the packet. Um, okay. So that would also be part of the contingent or the consent agenda. I'll move for approval, including item I, I think. on the agenda. I'll second that. Okay. We've had a motion and a second. Roll call. Um, Morissette? Yes. Hoggett? Yes. Alms? Yes. Hall? Yes. Weber? Yes. I'll abstain. Um, next item is uh, covered in finance, but uh, discussion of possible action on the request from Tyrell and Jennifer Gaffer to acquire park property between 236 Cooley Road and 202 Cooley Road. And was everybody here during the discussion? Yes. Okay. Benny? If there's any questions, uh, Gaffers are here tonight. If uh, you'd like to ask any particular questions of them, again, uh, the motion at the Finance Committee was to initiate the process for disposing of park property. A public hearing would be scheduled for a second meeting in February, preceded by a Class II notice, um, and also with the opportunity for myself and Tom Zui, our Park and Rec Director, to sit down with the gaffers to discuss uh, possible compensation considerations for the property. Gaffers are here tonight if you'd like to ask any questions of them. Sure, what are you going to do with the property? Uh, 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 we bought the Rose House. Uh, why, don't you, why don't you come up here yeah. to the mic? <coughs> My name is Terrell Gaffer. Uh, we had bought the Rose residence uh, right behind Dairy Queen in between the Nova's parking lot and Dairy Queen a few months back, and it's been condemned, so we are looking at uh, tearing it down and using it as a training facility for the fire department and then eventually burning it hopefully in March here. Uh, with the parking issues we've seen with the restaurant and the liquor store and with Dairy Queen uh, being busier, uh, we're looking at extending the Nova's parking lot into that space and using it as more parking space for both facilities. That makes sense. I'll move for approval and uh, setting up the public hearing on February 26th establishing all the parameters that Denny set out, including negotiating with the gaffers. And referral to the plan commission. And that as well. Is there a second? Yes. Yeah, second. Oh, go ahead, Trace. No second. Right. Hey, all those in favor? I have a question. I, I, <clears throat> I have a question. Oh, I'm sorry. What's the current zoning of that area? Is there a, any, are there any issues there? Well, the current zoning is public, which means if the city would just choose to dispose of it, they would have to go for a procedure to rezone the property. And we wouldn't do that till we dispose of the property, and it's just no longer public, publicly owned. I don't know if we got the vote in or not, but all those in favor? <laughs> Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Next is discussion of possible action on the application of Sapporo Inc. DBA Sapporo for a Class B fermented malt beverage and Class B liquor license at 20, excuse me, at 1028 Pearson Drive and request for an extension of the timely start of business until May 31st, 2016. Is there somebody to speak on that? <coughs> Good evening, uh, Attorney Ryan Carey here representing uh, the applicant Sapporo Inc. Also joining me this evening is uh, Zhang Zizeng, uh, who is sitting in the, the rear of the audience here. Um, he is the sole shareholder of Sapporo uh, Inc. Um, I'll just talk high level about the application and then uh, obviously open up to questions. Um, Mr. Zhang, through other entities, uh, currently operates three other restaurants in Minnesota. Um, Woodbury, uh, the Osaka in Woodbury, the Osaka in Eden Prairie, and the Osaka restaurant in uh, Bloomington. These are uh, Asian restaurants. Um, the applicant seeks to 
uh, open a similar uh, restaurant here in Hudson. Uh, 1028 Pearson Drive is, is a new address. It's uh, our new new location. It's the Strip Center um, near Perkins that was recently uh, put up by Banterra. It would be the unit that is the southernmost uh, unit, approximately 3,000 uh, square feet in total footprint. Uh, again, the uh, applicant uh, has the property under lease, um, contingent upon issuance of these liquor licenses. Um, the uh, restaurant would be similar to, to Osaka that you would see in these other locations. It would be doing business under a different name, uh, that is Sapporo. Um, it would be a full service, uh, sit down style restaurant. With, uh, we're seeking obviously licenses to permit it to be a, a full service uh, bar as well. Um, <clears throat> if you have any specific questions about the operation of the restaurant itself, of course, uh, Mr. Zhang is here to answer those. Um, uh, but that generally is the high level information regarding the application. In terms of the area, the area is, is set out uh, that we seek to have the, um, the license issued uh, with regard to uh, certain areas, um, including a patio. Uh, the patio uh, is immediately adjacent, again, south end of the building. It would be completely enclosed uh, by a, a fence, um, and uh, the fence material would be of the type that you currently see um, in the area. Um, other similar situated restaurants, like the ones that come to mind are a Chipotle, I believe, has one. Be a Buffalo Wild Wings has one. It would be a metal type uh, fence, again, completely enclosed to protect the patrons and those around uh, um, you know, from the, you know, the uh, serving and, and consumption of alcohol. So again, that's the high level of, of the application. The only other item I'll point out is that we are requesting an extension for the time we started the business till May 31st of 2016. Um, and the applicant is confident that the build out can be uh, complete by that time and the restaurant uh, open. Kathy, do you have a comment? Yeah, the comment just had to do with the patio because it didn't come up in finance. And I just, um, in the past, the council has actually looked at a sketch. This isn't built out yet. And the reason I bring it up is that if you approve it with the patio now, sight unseen, you cannot um, take Revisit that it? away afterwards without going through a revocation proceeding. So you may want to defer the patio portion, and it's up to you until you it's built out and you can see a sketch on how it's going to work and the type of fencing. I, I do have a sketch with me, if that would be something that the council would like to consider. Sure. The yellow area is generally the restaurant, although you see on the right side of the page, you see it's marked patio. And that would be obviously the, the enclosed patio for which we seek the license to be issued. Just one question, no gates or anything in, on the fence around the patio? No, no sure. gates. Okay. The access would be from the From the Correct. restaurant, okay. There is one shown on this drawing. Oh, there is. Is that the entrance to the? Right down there. Is that the patio right there? The oh, there. yeah. It does have a doorway type symbol on there. Is that required for emergency oh, exit? Do we know? I don't know. That's just one of the reasons why you may want to defer that portion of the description mm -hmm. so you can see exactly the layout. Yeah, Ryan, because I think if it would hold your process up. We'd have to revoke the license, go through all that stuff. And well, you wouldn't. You likely wouldn't have a basis for changing it. Yeah. But if we, if it's done, if something's wrong, it would just and slow then it the process. Takes a letter from you to us saying we'd like to amend it, and then yeah, yeah. Sure. certainly we, we don't want to hold it up today. If if that's going to hold it up, the entire application, we're not saying it, it has to include the patio today. If if it if it uh, would uh, you know, please the council, uh, we would simply ask that uh, when when construction and build out is complete, and we can present photographs of the patio as constructed, including the enclosure. 
we could present that for consideration and we would request <laughs> that that area be uh, uh, become part of the licensed premises. And there'll be a renewal process in June anyway, so sure. potentially depending on when the build out is. Yes. Any other questions? I think we'll see that. Who, does Marty review the patio area? Thanks, who, who reviews that to see, you know, does it meet our requirements? Does Probably it be, the, be the, the building, building inspector. Building inspector. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Building inspection department would do that. Okay. I'll move for approval and excluding the patio if that's, I think that's better that way. And uh, yeah, I'll move for approval. I'll second it. Minus the patio. Okay. Will that fulfill? Yeah, it, just what would happen is the patio oh. would be struck from the description. And then, yeah, you're welcome to submit an application to change the license description. Okay. And that's up to the council at that time. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Ryan, give you your. Thank you. Next is discussion of possible action on the truck body crane bid for the wastewater department. And I think you all were aware of the earlier discussion. Kip, do you want to? Uh, good evening again. again. Um, on January 21st, 10 a.m., we opened bids for the truck body crane uh, for the F 550 for the wastewater treatment plant. Um, we received one bid from truck utilities. Uh, for $59,563, uh, we did have $62,500 in our budget for that, for that purpose. So, um, so we are under what we had budgeted for that. So. Is there a motion? Yeah, I'll move to approve. I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion, uh, any opposed? Motion carries. Next is discussion and possible action on the written request to amend the premises description for Pier 500 by, for a one-time event on February 13, 2016. I think you all. I'll move for approval. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, motion carries. Next is uh, Public Safety Committee um, Ordinance 1-16, creation of Article 2 of Section 207 of the Municipal Code regarding composting. Is I can, There's two, two sections. Let's go with A first. Is there anybody here to speak on that topic? Well, I, I'm the public safety person, so and Catherine can interject on the composting. It's been a long time coming, but we oh. presented you. Oh, yeah, I just, as I was reviewing it today, um, she, she throws realized, a wrench in it. <laughs> well, my thought on it was that it was residential composting, so that it would be allowed only in the single family residential district in the city. Um, it talks about residential kitchen waste and so forth. And the ordinance doesn't actually say that it's only permitted in the single family residential. So I did ask Chief Jensen and um, apparently that wasn't actually discussed and so at the committee and so we should discuss it. I don't know if that was your thought as well. And you may want to do just a first reading and bring it back or else just add as um, in in that requirement section you know that it's only allowed in the single family residential district was that the intent well that's what you yeah i i can't i think it would create problems certainly in multifamily if everyone wanted to have some type of i don't know in considering setbacks you considered to me, it seemed like it was based on a residential lot, not other types of property. But, but I'm no, not making the decision. I just wanted to point that yeah. out. Catherine, what needs to be changed to make it clear that it's only applying to residential? Well, it would need to have a statement, uh, composting bins, like could be number eight, shall be allowed pursuant uh, to this ordinance only in the single family residential district. I think Denny's got something to I can comment on that. Uh, I don't disagree with Catherine's intent. 
However, you do have one family homes, you have two family homes, two family homes might be in an R2, two family residential district. We have single family homes and, and two family homes in planned residential districts, which aren't zoned oh, R11 okay. family. Yep. So, I mean, you, you, know, you can make it generic as in regards to one and two family homes and then specify the specific zoning districts that those may exist in. But I, I don't think you want to restrict it because I don't believe that's yeah, the intent correct. only to single family homes. I think mm -hmm. two, it would apply equally to a two family home. Well, there's set, like setbacks in there. How does that work with? Uh, typically, your setbacks are the same. In a, in a, now, in a, I, you know, perhaps your recommendation of having first reading, going back and massaging this mm -hmm. particular section of the ordinance uh, with a recommendation might be the best way to go. I think so. Mm -hmm. Okay. I mean, yes, and I agree with you, but the intent was not to limit it. So I will move for first reading. Okay. So I'll you work can, with any. Yeah, and then hopefully you can have that at our next meeting because yes. we've had this on the books yep. for too long. Definitely. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's, it's not a significant change. It, no. You know, Kathy, I can talk about five minutes, we'd have it addressed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Um, next is uh, Ordinance 2 16 Amendment to Section. 212-9 of the Municipal Code regarding snow and ice removal from sidewalks. Is there anybody here to speak on this? Well, essentially what this does is defines that it isn't just, the way it reads right now, it, it says the front, right? It just says the front, and the reason for this is that we've run into some issues um, where we haven't had people cleaning their sidewalks, and when we've issued them citations for not maintaining their sidewalks, They've complained that, well, this is not my front, this is my back, and nothing's getting taken care of, and the city's responsible for cleaning the sidewalks. This came to us from our prosecuting attorney, stating that this language would help clean that up so when we do issue citations, it'd be more enforceable in court. Uh, you, uh, have you issued any tickets this year? I believe we have issued a couple Okay. for the sidewalks. So... When we, when we get the complaints in, Sergeant Munich has been on them right away, taking pictures, sends out notices, tell them they got you know, 40, 24 to 48 hours to get them cleaned up, or otherwise they're gonna get a citation. He comes back later if they're not cleaned up, he issues a citation and then puts out a notice to the city crew. I think that you probably were in receipt of an email from one of my constituents regarding sidewalks and a suggestion that something be put on the city website so people could actually report or disclose a, a condition? I, I could sure put a link out in the front page that if you have complaints to notify. Right. But isn't, there is a complaint There's apparatus a complaint in the website itself because we get them for weeds and debris in the, in well, yards and Well, I'll do two stuff. things. I'll get that out there and then I'll also put a notice out there that are you aware that this link is here? And, okay, right. I'll take care of it. Any further discussion? I'll move to suspend the rules. Second. Roll call vote. I'll move to approve ordinance 2 oh, wait, six. Wait, wait. Roll call. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Morissette? Yes. Hoggett? Yes. Hall? Yes. Weber? Yes. Holmes? Yes. Yes. <laughs> okay, well, I didn't know. <laughs> you guys are missing That's all right. Tonight. <laughs> Okay, communications and recommendations. Oh, no, no. oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'll sorry. go ahead. I'll move to approve ordinance uh, 2-16. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 I think that's everybody. Motion carries. Okay, communication recommendations of the mayor. I have no idea what his thoughts yeah. are. He will. Communication, he, he indicated he will be back next week. So. Communications and items for future agendas. Council members. <coughs> I've got something. Uh, today I attended the county library planning committee which is chaired by dave osnes um, there was a lengthy discussion of um, the hudson area library's reimbursements or lack thereof to its neighbors um, so i would like to put that on the agenda for the next meeting to um, discuss that and whether there whether there's something that we want to do about it and if so um, what we would want to do about that 
Um, the committee is suggesting a compromise proposal for us to discuss at our next meeting, so I will bring that proposal to it, to the council. Anybody else? City attorney. No. Kevin. Just a reminder that the primary election is on February 16th. We will have absentee ballots. Absentee ballot in-person voting is available starting next Monday here at City Hall. So Monday through Friday, 8 to 4.30, you can do that at the... And also, if you have the opportunity to register prior to the election, that'll make things a little easier. Then you can register on election day, but if you take care of it earlier, that'll speed things up for you on election days. And that can be done at City Hall as well. Are the only items on the um, ballot for February 16th, the mayor and then the Supreme, State Court? Supreme Court? Correct. Mm -hmm. And we did get the new machines are here. We got the ballots today. We did training today, so <laughs> knock on wood, we'll <laughs> set to go. Is this wood? Oh, no. no. <laughs> Is there a motion to adjourn? Move to adjourn. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.